My eBay sales are up 63.8%. Here's why. Hey guys, Samson here. First thing I'm going to do over here on my eBay seller hub is refresh the page for full transparency with you guys. And as you can see here, my eBay sales are up 63.8%. This being in spite of the fact that we are in a historically slower month for eBay, being June. As you can see down here, the market is down across all of eBay and it is also down from last year as well. I wanted to make this video because not only have I been able to significantly increase my sales on my public eBay store, but I've also done so without investing any extra time into running this part of my eBay business. Yes, I'm being serious guys, I've been able to get over a 60% increase in my eBay sales on this store without investing any extra time into it. So let me explain how. There are going to be four main points that I'll cover in this video to try and give you the full perspective on why my sales are up. First, I thought it was important to give you guys some context, so I'm going to be covering the technical reasons. Um, everything in this store is promoted at a minimum of 1%, so everything in the store, minimum 1% flat rate promotion, uh, and that's very easy to set up in your promotions manager. And then there's also some of the more um, competitive products, like products in a more competitive niche. So for example, a basic Adidas jacket, something like that may be promoted at maybe seven or 8% even, it just depends. But for at least 90% of the products in my store, they're promoted at 1%, and I've been seeing some pretty good results in terms of traffic and therefore sales with that. Um, I've been sending offers to watches twice daily, once once in the morning and once in the evening, that hasn't changed. Responded to all buyer questions and offers within 24 hours. Offers, it's usually way quicker, like if I get the notification and I'm not doing something too intense, I'll just generally respond to the offer straight away, but buyer questions, I like to respond to again once in the morning and once in the evening. Finally, I have ended and relisted around 200 items in total from the uh, past 30 days when my sales have been trending upwards. The last thing that I think it's important for me to disclose to you guys is that yes, this store was getting neglected just a tiny bit before my sales went up. Um, that's kind of to be expected with such a drastic increase. So what we're talking about specifically is that the sales were hovering around $6,500 um, for the monthly average or the monthly total for this store. And then around a month and a half ago, I was really focused on um, the importing side of my eBay business. So I'd kind of neglected this store a bit in that I wasn't listing that much on it, but I was still listing consistently, but the amount of items was not that much, maybe only five or 10 per day. And that was about five days per week. So the sales total, I believe, dropped at its lowest point to around $4,800, $4,900 on that 30-day total. So now that I've given you the context, I'm going to get into the main part of this video, the reason why I wanted to make it, which are the three sort of things, the key factors that I think have affected my sales. And most of these have to do with my mentality or different approaches that I've taken in terms of running this store. The first thing I did was intentionally remove distractions that were preventing me from scaling up this store. Some of those were physical distractions. And um, what I'm talking about here is like clutter in my office, in my stockroom and my garage and you know in my home business in general because for someone like me that definitely does make a big difference. Sometimes when you see a bunch of stuff and it's all messy it, it can just be a mental blockade for you so I knew that I had to get on top of that if I wanted to kind of make some real progress with this business um, or with this store in particular. Hard to list items under $25, that was a good example of this. Um, if I found an item, so, so basically within my garage, there's like a lot of stuff that maybe doesn't fall under the category of um, clothing or electronics and it's not products that I've imported. It's just stuff that I maybe got when, my, uh, when I was casting a much broader net in terms of what I was willing to resell on my main or on my public eBay store. Uh, and all of that stuff, I kind of just went through it and I scanned it or I looked it up on eBay. Some of it was like books, some of it was kind of video games even, um, and if it was under $25 and it was going to be something that was gonna take me a while to list, uh, it was just gonna get donated. So I took a whole heap of stuff to my local Salvation Army and that stuff is out of um, you know out of sight, out of mind now. Uh, video games under $25, I lotted them up in one lot and I sold them for $200 on Facebook Marketplace. That was really easy. I knew I put a lot of value into this lot. Um, honestly, if I was still selling kind of anything I could get my hands on and I was prepared to list it all individually, I really probably could have gotten closer to $500 worth of um, out of the stuff that I put in this $200 lot. So someone definitely got a deal. It was really good for me to be able to remove that distraction. And then finally, the mental distractions of researching and listing a variety of items that's been removed for me. I'm just selling clothing on this store. That's all I want to sell on my public eBay store. Um, of course, that's notwithstanding the other, you know, imported products that I have. But with this store, it's just going to be clothing 
and I'm really gonna optimize for that. The next thing I did is list more. That might be pretty obvious to you guys, but it's not what I did, it's how I did it. So let me explain that. As I said at the start of this video, I haven't spent any extra time running this part of my eBay business, but I did still manage to list more. So let me explain how. Um, it's First of all, it wasn't that I was more consistent. I just managed to list more in the time that I spent listing. I went from listing around 10 to 15 items per day, around five days per week, uh, previous to my sales being up, to listing around 40 to 60 items per day, five days a week, within really like the same amount of time. And that basically required me to get a lot faster at listing as I can only really do it for around four to five hours a day all in. Um, I find if I try and list for more, maybe more than maybe five to six hours at the most, I really do get fatigued and I don't want to be doing something that I don't enjoy. Uh, so I basically took the time to learn the eBay file exchange and I talked about that. I started talking about this almost a month ago now and I've actually just gotten good at it at this point, um, you know, to the point where that four or five hours that I spend listing daily uh, around five days per week on this store, I'm able to get done uh, at least double what I was just listing manually or just listing regularly using the eBay website. Um, I, I had to learn how to use spreadsheets and initially my sales did drop because there was about a week there where I barely listed anything at all. Um, you know, maybe listed 50 items that week in total at the most. Uh, and that was probably all in one day when I was first trying out the file exchange. And I had to start developing a process to not just use the file exchange, but use it in an efficient way that was actually going to save me time. So I managed to actually do that. And now that I have that process in place, my eBay sales have surged up. Finally, I wanted to explain the kind of mentality change that has helped me increase my eBay sales on this store. I feel like this is probably the most important thing that I can bring you in this video, um, the most value that I can provide because this is really a game changer for me. In order to be more productive, I made it my goal to better understand how I work and therefore optimize my life around that. So what I've kind of worked out over really the past year and a half, but specifically within the past few months I've really been honing in on this is that I have around four hours of my best work in me each day and I can only really access that work or you know that level of mental focus between the hours of 6 a.m. to 12 p.m. I know that might seem a bit specific, but for me, that's just what I've found so far, and I am happy to be proven wrong in the future. So I kind of try and structure my day accordingly to get the most out of those hours. The last two books I have read have been The Subtle Art of Not Giving an F by Mark Manson, and also The Entrepreneur Roller Coaster by Darren Hardy. Um, I definitely recommend both of those books, and between you and me, you can actually find full audiobooks of them on YouTube. I know I've mentioned this before, but not all of our waking hours are equal in terms of the potential output that we have within them. So, you know, maybe uh, for instance, 6 to 7 p.m. for me, like I know that I'm just not going to be that productive. So it's not worth it for me to try and get some really intense work done then. I've known this for a while, but I've really tried to optimize how I use these early hours and just been very cognizant of it. So as soon as I wake up, because I've, I've been trying to wake up, you know, an hour before um, 6 a.m. So I can really get the most out of that time. And I just know that, right, uh, I shouldn't look at it like I have all day to do this task. So I'm just going to fit it in where necessary. If it's something that's important, I really only have around that six hour window to get it done. Here are three things I've done to be more productive and get the most out of my early hours within my day. Um, first is meal preparation. I've prepared all of my meals in advance and I like to do that on a Sunday afternoon. It's a very relaxing thing to do. It's, it's not something that takes a lot of my mental energy and the, um, the rewards for doing it do definitely pay off throughout the week because for one, you don't ever have to worry about cooking or very rarely. And for two, you spend a lot less money on takeaway and stuff like that because you never have the excuse of, well, it's easier to order something than cook when all you have to do is heat something up from the fridge. I've also purchased business upgrades that have reduced the time I spend doing low value tasks. Um, specifically, one of those was a new dryer for the clothes that I sell. Also box lighting. Now I do edit my eBay photos, but I'm thinking the fact that I have this lighting will reduce the amount of photos that need to be edited or at least need any manual editing because I would still find that a few of the photos that I'd run through Photoshop's automatic background removal tool would need that extra editing. And with the lighting that has reduced the amount of them that do need it and also since the photos naturally just look good I haven't been manually editing any of my photos I'm also in the process of setting up Australia Post eParcel which is just a service where they will come and collect the post from your address rather than you having to drop the parcels that you need to send off at the post office I think that is going to help me 
a lot, saving at least 20 to 30 minutes each day that I spend going to and from the post office. I'm in the process of setting that up. I have a call on Monday with the representative from that who is going to show me like a contract that I have to sign in order to set this up. And hopefully it is not much more expensive, if at all, from what I'm currently paying with my post business. So fingers crossed that all goes smoothly. And then finally, I'm still sourcing almost exclusively online. Uh, I did go thrifting a couple of times last week, but that was pretty much just for my own enjoyment. But I'm also making sure to try and do this later in the day because I've now recognized that just sourcing in general is something that I can do pretty easily. It's you know not something that requires a lot of mental energy opposed to some of the other parts of running my business. All right, guys, so those are some of the main reasons why my eBay sales are up over 60%. If you have any questions or comments about what I covered in this video, please make sure to put them down in the comments because I respond to every single one. If you found this video helpful or informative, make sure to drop a like and also subscribe for more eBay selling content. Thank you very much for watching my video and I will see you in the next one.